So I wanted to do another update on my Neolamprologus brevis colony. Uh, they're in a 20 long with about 50 shells in them. I got a little rock pile over here on the side. So they've been spawning for about two months now. Pretty much continuously. I have two pair in here. And they've been pretty much spawning all the time. So there's multiple generations in here. So I just fed them a little bit. That's all the stuff you see floating under the water. I've been feeding them a combination of baby brine shrimp and golden pearls. Which the golden pearls are amazing. They're it's basically just a, a really fine powdered fry food. But you can see the parents like them. Just, to, just as good as the babies do so I don't know if we'll be able to see but the, they don't really like the camera yeah there they go so down in that shell where they just dove down in there's about uh, I've seen 8 or 10 fry down there they're almost ready to get kicked out so what I've noticed is that as the fry come out they don't stay in the shells They'll move over here to this wide open space, and you can see several of them bobbing up and down there. Now, I don't know. Typically, you would see fry hide a lot more, but these are out wide and out in the wide open space. So this is my first time keeping this particular fish, so it's interesting to learn. But there's a lot of blackbeard algae growing on the, on the snail shells. A lot of people hate on it. It doesn't look bad. And it helps with the nitrates. In Florida, we have nitrates in our water straight from the tap. And the out, letting some algae grow, it gives it a natural look. And it also helps... Pull some of the nitrates from the water. So there's a lot of people say they have difficulty sexing these fish, but for me it's pretty obvious. The female is always going to be the smaller one. Um, the the male is always going to be a little bit larger at, at maturity. See the other ones hanging out down there. They're a bit camera shy. So, so there you go. There's about in about two months. I have about 20, 25 fry that are kicking around here. They just there were a few down here in the in the gravel. So in Florida, these guys are from Lake Tanganyika, and in Florida the, the water is already pretty hard, so I don't really chase the pH too much, uh, or the, uh, the carbonate hardness. Um, I have crushed coral as a substrate, and this over here is just straight lime rock, so it really helps buffer the water and keep it... Uh, keep it really nice and hard for the, the cichlids that's kind of what they thrive on and it's more about stability than it is meeting some magical number some people say they have to have 8.5 but our tap water comes out about 7 8 and with the rocks it usually buffers you know 7 8 7 9 maybe it may buffer up a little bit but um, it's right about where these fish need. So, that's my Neolamprologus brevis tank.